Hey y'all, Zay QNC here with uh, the newest Lego robot of my creation. Um, I'm going to be taking it down soon. Before I do, I want to just document it and show everybody its features. It's four wheel drive, um, has a six speed transmission, and two transfer cases one here, one here. Two transfer cases have three different ranges a low range, which is three to one, mid range, which is one to one, and an overdrive, which is one to two. The six speeds in the transmission, low range is a 6 to 1, second gear is a 3 to 1, third gear is a 2 to 1, fourth gear is a 1 and a half to 1, fifth is a 1 to 1, and sixth gear is an overdrive, it's a 1 to 2 again. Um, there's a worm gear at each of the differentials in the main steering hubs, and basically it's four wheel drive, four wheel steer, but it doesn't steer Typically, it steers with a 4-4 swivel type steering, and so the drivetrain is that worm gear. The chassis spins around it like so. Switch it on, and this is demonstration of the steering. Okay, it's powered by a medium motor at each steering knuckle that operates the steering mechanism that's also controlled by a worm gear so that power is not trans locked in place so another function of having the worm gear in the drivetrain is an automatic brake it will not roll um, forward along only will move when the drivetrain is moving. So, um, all in all, the highest high range that the system gives is a 12 to 1. The lowest low range is an 864 to 1. And some of the um, different ranges in the, in the mid, in the low range, mid range, and high range transfer gears are duplicated. Um, but pretty much it works best in the in the low range and works it can use all of the six speeds in the low range and it can use probably speeds one through three maybe four in the mid range um, really can't use much of the high range that much which is unfortunate it's got four XL motors obviously um, in sequence in kind of a doubly symmetric pattern so um, they're powering one central drivetrain through the middle of the transmission also got some little cockpits here with the rear driver and the front driver Okay, notice a little compass here. We got some radar, steering arms. Um, all right, and, and uh, here's for oh, and also there's also a three to one reduction um, with these portal hubs that I built on the independent suspension. So um, these springs are really excellent Lego springs that I found online. Um, their original Lego parts, but never seen them in any kit before. But anyway, they give a good bounce. Very strong, very strong springs. Um, so we'll do some driving. Demonstrate. Straighten up the wheels. All right, I believe it's in the low range. Yep, we're in the low range transfer gear. And we're going to pop her into uh, fourth gear. We'll start out right here. So, fourth gear represents a one and a half to one reduction. There's, I'll go through the whole reductions of the whole drivetrain. Engine represents a one to three, or excuse me, a three to one first, and then a one to two. So ultimately that's a one and a half to one to the transmission. Right here in this fourth gear, we're in another one and a half to one. Multiply down to our low range, that's a three to one. Multiply down 24 to one in the, uh, with the worm gear, and then another three to one in the hub. That's what gives us this really slow creeping motion. In this high, this is sixth gear, you can hear the engine struggling a little bit more. This is one of its faster speeds that it can it can handle. 
Um, obviously not that fast right here. A lot of energy lost in the complex transmission. So I'll just demonstrate a little turning. Put her in uh, third gear. One other function of having these 4-4 four, four swivel type of steering is I must have an open differential um, in each wheel because, or in each front and rear end because uh, when it swivels like that, one wheel is actually moving back and the other forward. So any, any other um, lock differential or spool differential or limited slip wouldn't function correctly. I could have an, a lockable, selectable differential, but just based on how often I would need to steer, it's better just to have fully open. There is, however, no center differential, so both the front and rear get up, get equal power at all times. So we're going to pop her into first gear. You'll see a noticeable reduction in speed. Doesn't even barely look like it's moving right here, but it is. And uh, this is basically its best climbing gear, so we'll do a little climbing demonstration over my hand. And I'm building up some torque everywhere. You can see in the far rear wheel, the one furthest away from me, it's spinning a little bit more. It looks like it might be losing some of the traction might be lost right there. So that's going to be hurting the climbing abilities. I can feel it building up some traction though on my, on my skin. These wheels that are on it, I just put them on for the first time. They came from the Unimog set, which is awesome. If any of y'all need to buy it. Um, however, I used to have those big fat wheels on it, which it works well with also. Um, and those give a little bit more traction in this type of a situation. But because, because these are a lot lighter, um, kind of the overall performance of the of the robot is is improved. You can see it's steadily climbing up. You can hear there's not really any stress in the engine. I'm watching the levers right now, the transfer case and the transmission levers, because one one thing that will will happen sometimes is the torque buildup will pop the clutch out, and you can pop it back in. It's fine. Um, you can see it's climbing. I'm kind of Flux in my hand a lot more, so it always just has has an angle, a steeper angle to climb up. It's going over my middle knuckle right now. I can still see some slippage in the far wheel. All every time that wheel slips, it's torque loss from climbing. So in this in this instance right here, I'd be benefiting from having some lockable differentials. I would lock them up right here, but I think it's working fine. Finally over the, the knuckle. If my beautiful helper would go and pop it into switch the top gear lever. No, she doesn't know what which lever to switch, so it's gonna put into a faster gear on the on the de departure departure from my my hand, but we'll just have to wait and watch. Actually, I can probably do this. There we go. I just put it into third gear. You can see the little two drivers on either end. They're talking big time right now. They're communicating over the special radio frequencies that they have in outer space. The force fields are protecting them from the vacuum. And uh, they're off to explore another crater. So I hope you all enjoyed the new robot. It's going to change a lot. 
again and um, come back again soon for for the next the next iteration. Peace out.